Okay, first logistical question. Can people hear me? Yes. Awesome. And that's always promising. Uh, and that second logistical question or item, uh, and that the there will be a QR code and URLs at the end for you to be able to get at these slides. Don't feel that you need to be taking photos along the way, though you are obviously welcome to do so if you have a camera that's like burning a hole in your pocket, because the Surgeon General warns that having things burning in your pocket may be hazardous to your health. And we ready? We we are ready in the back, so let's slowly get things started. Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Mark Murphy from Commonsware, and I'm here to talk to you about slices. Quick show of hands, how many of you have already played around with slices? That's about what I expected. Um, and that the most of you I'm hoping are kind of in the bucket of yeah, I remember they talked about slices at Google I.O. What, whatever happened to those things anyway? Because um, slices have had a really weird rollout. Uh, and that for something that arguably should be a premier feature of Android 9.0, um, it's kind of been strange. Um, Google's focus has been pretty much on how slices can be used to help Google. Um, and that their focus is on how you could publish slices in order to be able to integrate with Google Search and the Google Assistant and things like that, except for the teensy-weensy detail that we can't actually do any of that yet. Um, and that it's five months since the first developer previews, and we're still waiting. Um, and, that, and so there is no real official part of the OS uh, or even part of like the standard Google suite of apps way of making use of slices. And you know, you got weirdness in the docs uh, and that these slices don't have anything to do with video uh, and that they may not match your app's design and so forth. And this is all very sad. Um, and that slices are an interesting bit of tech, perfectly cromulent. We can use this for all sorts of different things. And that what it requires is some amount of communication and coordination between parties and a bunch of education. And that the end, with the focus being what it is, we're short on some of those things, which is where I'm trying to help out here today. So, what I'm going to be talking about is, okay, what are these slices really? Um, and that what are we accomplishing with them? How do we create slices? How do we have our apps publish these slices so that other apps, maybe ones even that we're writing, can turn around and host these things, render the slices inside of their own user interfaces, plus talk about why? What, what's the point behind any of this? How are we going to you know, do something that's going to help our users, help our business, help our organization, help somebody? Slices are one recent facet of a problem that we have been dealing with for decades. We have stuff in this program and we want to have it show up in that program. Um, I suffer from a chronic medical condition it's called old. <laughs> and yes, it's terminal. Um, and that the, and so I, you know, I can regale you of tales of distributed object protocols back in the early 90s and Microsoft object linking and embedding for being able to take an Excel sheet and put it in a Word document and you know, all that sort of stuff. The web is all about, you know, some app A putting content in app B, app A being a web server, app B being a web browser. We have been doing this all along. In the realm of Android, focusing on content sharing between apps, the predominant thing that we've been using has been remote views. How many of you have written an app widget? Actually, that's a, more than I would have expected. Um, and that the, uh, how many of you have used an app widget? You put an app widget on your home screen or a launcher. There were fewer people who use them than write them. I don't know how you test. 
but anyway, um, I'm assuming there's an answer for that. Um, and so with app widgets, we have one app that amongst other things that it does, it is an app widget provider. It publishes a data structure called a remote views that then makes its way over to your home screen or launcher, and it's going to use utility code from inside of the Android SDK to be able to display that. The remote views, for those of you who haven't worked with them, is fairly literal. You hand it a resource ID of a layout resource. We are going to start with this, and then we want you to say, oh, okay, uh, for this text view, I want you to put in that piece of text, and for this text view, that text, and for this image view, put in that image, and oh, when this button gets clicked, invoke this pending intent to let me find out about it. Remote views is parcelable. We can pass it across process boundaries. And so we create the remote views. It gets schlepped between our process to the home screen launcher process where it gets rendered. At the surface, slices sound like much the same thing. We have slice providers, a feature of an app that's doing other things usually, and that, but it also publishes slices. And so the slice provider is responsible for creating slice objects. Slices are parcelable. We can pass them across process boundaries. And we have other code that serve as what I'll refer to as slice hosts, things that are responsible for your being able to render these slices and show them to the user by one means or another. Very similar system. The difference is in the nature of what it is that we're passing around. Remote views, as I said, we're dealing with widgets, and, that, uh, and particularly the subset of widgets that remote view supports, which looks very much like 2011. And, that, and so you've got text view and button and image view and chronometer for some reason, and a handful of other things, um, list views and that, but you know, no recycler views, no constraint layouts, none of the more recent goodness. And so you think about creating a remote views, you were thinking about creating a UI, kind of like creating an activity or a fragment, just with a constrained palette of what you can use. Slices, eh, that's not the way they're set up. Slices, what the provider is providing in the slice is structured data. We're not saying text views and buttons and whatnot. We're saying, hey, uh, we've got the data in here for the four-day Washington, D.C. weather forecast. Uh, here are the four days. You, you know, it, it is, you know, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, and that the, the expected high temperatures. And uh, here are icons representing the uh, weather that we're going to be having. It's going to be sunny or cloudy or rainy or snowy or kaiju or zombies or, you know, whatever. Um, and, that, and so we are providing that data along with a bit of metadata to suggest how that probably ought to get displayed. Uh, we want there to be a caption across the top that says Washington DC weather, and then beneath that we want to have you know, four cells side by side where in each one of the cells we want to have the day, we want to have the icon, and we want to have the high temperature. The host then, when it gets this slice and it gets this data and metadata, it will do whatever it really wants to. Probably what it's going to do is it's going to render that using some Google supplied code. That part of the code that we use for not only creating slices can also be used to render them. Just as a remote views can be turned into a view in order to be able to be displayed on the screen, a slice can be poured into a slice view in order to be rendered on the screen. In many ways, rendering a slice using this code is easier than publishing one. We'll see how to render slices here today. But probably is not definitely or ironclad guaranteedly or anything like that. And so therefore, as you are working with your slices and developing them, you might think that your slice looks like this, except when it looks like this, or maybe this. But it's entirely possible it could look like this, or it could look like this, or it could look like this. <laughs> this is the text-to-speech rendition of the slice. You can't. See it, it, it speaks. But if, if I go back, and I'm going to advance again, I want you to listen real closely. 
okay, you can't hear it because I didn't actually write the code, um, and that to do the text-to-speech, uh, and that the, you could, we'll see how to do that sort of thing. Um, and that the, but the, we don't have any real control over exactly what it's going to look like. We're providing data. No more than you say, this is exactly how the Atom feed is going to look, or this is exactly how my web service API is going to be looked when it's shown to the user. Same thing here. We're providing the information, but what it winds up looking like may be something normal, maybe something different. And so if you've got graphic designers who are used to like, you know, being able to demand pixel perfection, you're gonna need to talk them off the ledge uh, and that the, when you get to talking about slices with them because they are, they, they may not be real happy with this. But it gives much more power uh, and that the and keeps things relatively compact in terms of what it is that we are defining and distributing. If you want to publish a slice, first thing you're going to need to do is add some code to be able to do that. There is a Java API for being able to publish slices. Uh, if you're interested in looking at that API, the Google I.O. presentations went through that. But since Google I.O., they released a, a Kotlin-specific library, and that Slice Builders KTX. And that which gives us a Kotlin slice building domain specific language, DSL. And that makes creating slices fairly trivial. But, you know, it's the sort of thing where, you know, not everybody has necessarily climbed Mount Kotlin yet. Uh, and so, you know, if you are, aren't ready for Kotlin, you're welcome to use the Java API. It's not that bad, but it is Java, and so it will be somewhat more verbose. The other thing to bear in mind is that this is Android X, and that the, everything involving slices, you are going to wind up using the Android X libraries, and that the Android X, of course, is this next generation repackaging of what we used to refer to as the support libraries, um, along with other related stuff, like the Android architecture components. And so the, all that stuff is getting moved into new packages. Um, Android X libraries and the earlier support libraries are two great tastes that yeah, maybe don't taste so great together. Um, and so the, you may have some challenges in trying to work with slices until you convert your app over to Android X. This, of course, is all still in varying alpha, beta, release candidate stages at the moment, and so um, you know there will be bumps in the road and, and that for the near term. But it's something that you're going to need to consider. Would you then write your core code, just as if you're creating an app widget, you create an app widget provider. With slices, you create a slice provider. An app widget provider Given the name, you would say, oh, that must be a content provider. It's not. It's a broadcast receiver. Slice provider, you would say, ah, just like app widget provider, it must be a broadcast receiver. No, this is a content provider. And that and so you're going to have a corresponding manifest entry to say, hey, here's uh, our provider element, uh, and that you'll give it an authority string and so forth. But like many other specialized subclasses of broadcast receiver and content provider and service that you may have used in Android before. When you're using slice provider, you're not necessarily overriding the generic API, but rather a very specific one for the task at hand. In this case, publishing slices by means of an on-bind on slice method or function. You'll override that, and your job is, given a URI, you return the slice where you will use the slice builders in order to actually assemble the slice from the bits and pieces of data that you want to have displayed by one means or another. We will take a look at some code for this here coming up in just a moment. I mentioned earlier that Android has no built-in ability to display a slice. And so somewhere along the line, we got to have something that shows us what this looks like so we have some idea of whether or not we did it right. Um, and that the particularly since what we think did it right means and what the library thinks did it right means may not necessarily agree. Right now, the go-to solution is the Slice Viewer app. Google has published a Slice Viewer app uh, out on GitHub uh, and that the, you can grab the source code. More importantly, 
if I can actually click the link, you can download APKs pre-compiled that represent the app, sideload them on your device by whatever means you prefer. The latest one was published back in June. 100 Alpha 3 refers to the version of the, sl of the Slice libraries that it's using. I'll come back to that point later on because it is somewhat important. So you'll grab that and install that on some device. The Slice libraries work back to API level 19, if I recall correctly. Uh, and, that the, and so you can, I will be demonstrating it on an Android 9.0, uh, Google Pixel here, but you can run it on older devices as well. The cool thing about Slice Viewer is that it is set up to be able to be integrated from Android Studio. In Android Studio, you can create run configurations. That's that drop down to the side of the run button um, in your toolbar uh, and the, where you may have ones for running your app and running your tests and so on. You can create another one of those where you say, okay, rather than launching an APK or something, uh, rather launching my launcher activity inside of the APK, I want to go in and have you view a URL and that using the slice content scheme where you'll provide the authority of your Slice provider as part of that URL. What then happens is that when you run the project and you're using that run configuration, Android Studio will push your APK over, it will do an action view intent for the URL that you specified, Slice Viewer will pick that up and show your Slice inside of its own UI. And so you don't necessarily need a built-in OS capability to show the Slice, the Slice Viewer app can handle that for you. And with that, let's turn to the code. So, um, I've got an Android Studio project with a couple of Slice providers plus a Slice host. We'll be looking at some of these here. Um, again, you're, uh, I'm going to be showing this in Kotlin uh, and that the using that Kotlin Builders uh, library if you are not super familiar with Kotlin, pay less attention to the syntax and more attention to the words that are coming out of my mouth. And so I've got a sampler slice provider and that it's extending slice provider and I have a corresponding manifest entry for it where I say, all right, here's the class for it. I'm going to set up my authority string to use the placeholders. Uh, feature of our manifest to say, all right, I want to add dot provider to the end of my application ID. That's going to be my unique authority string where my application ID is com commons where Android slice sampler. And so therefore my overall authority string is com commons where Android slice sampler provider because we like long authority strings. The big thing that you're going to do in your slice provider is override that on bind slice. You're given a URI, your job is to return a slice. Slices, if I turn around and run this thing, if I turn around and run this thing, and I turn around and run this thing, and I turn, around and run this thing, we see it showing up in the Slice Viewer app. Here you're looking live at this uh, Google Pixel. The reason why that works is if I look at that configuration, and it may be a little difficult for you in the back to read this, my apologies, um, and that the I have set up a dedicated run configuration where the launch option isn't the default uh, behavior, which is default activity, but rather I've overridden that to say I want to launch a URL. The URL is slice dash content, colon slash slash, and your authority string, or whatever other URI you want. It's got a map to your provider, but you can have the URIs be whatever structure you'd like. Everything after the authority string is up to you. We'll talk about scenarios for using different path segments in there coming up. And so when I ran this Android Studio triggered an action view intent to go view that URI, that triggered Slice Viewer to come around and be able to show my slice, sort of. 
the sort of is security and that the slice system has baked into it the notion that the user has to agree to allow this host to view this slice, at least to some level. And so what you will get initially, by default, is a message akin to this. Slice viewer sample, the host, wants to show slice sampler x, the, the, uh, the slice provider, show its slices. And if you click on that, you'll get a security dialog. What that security dialog looks like and where it's coming from depends upon where you are running. I am running on Android 9.0. This is a system dialog, and it provides a checkbox to say, hey, user, are you happy with Slice Viewer being able to show slices from any app? In which case, I won't bother you with this whole permission thing again whenever you're using Slice Viewer to go view slices from anything. If, on the other hand, you are running on an older device, there is going to be a, another activity inside of your project that is not from you. It is from the library, and I can't scroll this any higher, my apologies, uh, and that the, but the Android slice libraries are going to add an activity to your manifest, and they will arrange on those older devices to show that activity when the user uh, you know, requests the first view that slice. That's going to display the same sort of dialogue minus a checkbox to allow the host to be able to view everything because you know they can't do that. And so the, with a lot of the support libraries, whenever we use them, we're always using whatever in the, is in the library. If you're using fragment activity and the, and the support library edition of fragments, you are always using the edition of fragments that's in that library. Some of the support libraries, though, it's a mixed bag, that if you're on some version of Android, it simply forwards it along to the system, and if you're on older devices, it does something else. Slices work that way. And so when you are on Android 9.0, pretty much everything that you are doing is going to be forwarded along to platform-provided classes, and on older devices, it will supply its own implementation for those things. And so there may be slight behavior differences, hopefully not, but we can't rule it out. If I go in and say, sure, we'll allow that to view things, now all of a sudden, my slice shows up here. Slices can be viewed in one of three modes. And that the, this is the large mode. The Slice Viewer app has a menu to allow you to toggle between large, small, and shortcut, AKA really small. A slice is based off of a list. We provide a list of things to show in the slice. In large mode, that list is going to be rendered, surprisingly enough, as a list. And in the other modes, we will get a subset of the information in the list, such as small mode, we will get one row out of the list. And so the Slice Builder Kotlin DSL gives us a list function that we can call to say, hey, I want to build a slice based off of a list. Whatever I do inside of this list and that the, that's going to be turned automatically into a slice for me. And my job is to configure things. I say, oh, okay, uh, I'm building up this list. Uh, here's the specific URI that's representing this slice. You can specify how long the slice data is good for, and that if there's, you, know, you want automatic timeouts or something like that, you can say that you know, this is good for an hour or whatever. Or infinity says the data is good to infinity or possibly beyond. And you can go in and try to configure other things. You can hint that, hey, I would like the accent color to be this uh, magenta fuchsia-ish thing. Um, and that, the, that is your suggestion for what color these things should show up as. That can get overridden by the slice host. Do not assume that it's going to be that color. You're going to be able to go in and say, ah, oh, OK, I want to have the entries that are inside of this list. These are defined in various types of rows. And the Kotlin DSL gives you 
additional functions that you can invoke in order to go in and configure those. And so I can say, oh, I'd like to have a header row at the top, where I can provide a title and subtitle. Depending upon the particular mode that we're in, we may see the header, title, and subtitle along with other stuff. We may see the header title with other text. We may not see the header at all. You can go in and say, oh, I would like to have additional rows. Um, and that the, such as this is just an ordinary text output row, once again, with its own title and subtitle. You can go in and add other items, such in the form of actions. Actions are slice actions represent a thing that you want the user to be able to interact with. Many of these are going to be what are known as icon actions, uh, and that the, you create them where you provide an icon along with a pending intent, uh, and that to say, hey, the user should be able to tap this icon, and then when that occurs, please invoke this pending intent. Sometimes these can be other forms of input, a toggle action you are saying, hey, the user ought to be able to toggle something on and off, whether that is rendered then as a switch or a checkbox or a compound button or a two-state image view or whatever is up to the slice host. The standard slice rendering code will do that as a switch. These toasts are coming up because I am invoking the pending intent, and my pending intent is triggering a broadcast receiver, which happens to be showing toasts. Your slice always is going to have to somewhere have an action that is designated as the primary action. If you fail to provide this, your code goes boom. Uh, and that the, the primary action is going to be used in cases where we are showing the shortcut rendition. And so whatever your primary action is, that icon action, that's your shortcut. That could be an action that you put on the header. It could be an action that you put on an arbitrary other row. Here, I elected to say my primary action is on the second row of this, uh, uh, this um, slice, uh, and that it can be wherever you'd like. We can go in and we can say, oh, I've got um, ranges, and that the end I've got some rendering problem here where, oh, it's a probably a scrolling issue, uh, and that the uh, this is uh, should be showing here at the bottom, oh, come on. It should be showing a seek bar here at the bottom, uh, and that the, I think it's the landscape mode that it uh, doesn't have enough room in order to be able to display that. Um, and so the, um, ideally this would be scrollable. There seems to be some uh, limitations in the current slice rendering and that, that it's not actually scrolling up to show the seek bar. And so you can say with the input range, oh, hey, I want to allow the user to be able to specify a value from min to max, and please invoke this pending intent and give me an intent extra that tells me the value that they have set it to. We'll see grids coming up, uh, and that this is a number of different sorts of structures that you can define. The details of what you can all configure depends upon the particular type of row, and the DSL gives you dedicated functions for being able to declare those. So you set up the definitions. In my case, this is largely hard-coded, but you could be pulling it from other places, and that the and then you're returning the result of building this list, that will then be rendered in the slice host and that the when your slice is requested. The reason, part of the value behind the URI is that this all is being underlined by the content provider system and content providers and content resolvers give us a notification mechanism. A provider can call notify change on a content resolver to say, hey, the data at this URI changed. If you care about that, do something. And in the case of the slice system, we use this to go in and say, hey, the data associated with this slice has changed. Slice hosts will find out about that. We'll see how in a bit. Um, and they will then turn around and request a fresh slice from you. A number of reasons why you're going to do this. 
One is for populating the slice initially if you have to do I.O. On bind slice is called on the main application thread because of of course it's called on the main application thread. Um, and you don't want to be doing I.O. on the main application thread. And so you'll want to kick off background threads to do that work, but on bind slice has to return the slice synchronously. And so if you've got the data cached in memory, you can go in and build the real slice. If you don't have the data cached, you build some temporary slice with like a progress indicator to say, hey, we're loading that stuff, hang on just a moment. You fork a background thread, have it go load your data, cache it, and then call notify change. That'll trigger the slice host to come back, call trigger an on bind slice again. Now, presumably, you'll have the data cached and can publish, publish the real slice. Or you found out about a data change by some other means, and that you got a Firebase Cloud messaging message from the server saying, hey, our data changed. You downloaded the new data, and oh, wait, we've got slices that may be actually paying attention to that data. Hey, let's go um, make that, uh, let everybody know that they are reload their slices. Maybe it's a result of user input. You've got some sort of a refresh option um, inside of your UI or something like that that's going to uh, when they click that, you are going to go do something, load fresh data, and call notify change to let the slice host know, hey, please update the slice to reflect something different. And so, for example, I've got another slice provider, Slice and Dice, where if I run this thing in my slice viewer, if I run this thing, in my slice viewer, Gradle builds, I love you so much. I would love you even more if you completed in real time. And that behaved oddly, but that's okay. Uh, slice and dice, uh, and that gives you a roll of dice, uh, and that the and I've got a refresh action on the right, and that the which re-rolls. As slices go, this is stupid, but as opposed to like a weather forecast, I can always get a fresh roll. I can't sit here clicking and hope to get fresh weather, um, and that the from some real weather service. And so in my, uh, when I'm building this grid row, I am saying, oh, okay, five times through a loop, I am going to randomly choose an image. I am going to set up the image by decoding a resource and creating an icon based off of the bitmap. I'll talk a little bit more about why I'm doing that coming up. And I'm saying that the primary action is this role action, which builds me a um, pending intent that points to a broadcast receiver. That broadcast receiver then, in turn, goes in and says, hey, content resolver, I've changed. Please ask for a fresh slice. And so the user taps on the refresh icon. The pending intent triggers my broadcast receiver. My broadcast receiver says, hey, please load a fresh slice. That will eventually trigger a fresh call to on buying slice. And I grab another six random or uh, five random numbers and show five new die faces. Rendering slices, there is a slice view widget that's provided by one of the slice libraries. You can drop it in a layout, size it, position it however you wish, configure it such as saying which of those three modes do you want to be showing, large, small, or shortcut. You'll create a slice live data object using from URI to say, hey, um, and that the here is a URI identifying some slice, and we'll talk a little bit later about how you might get that URI. Slice live data, as the name suggests, is a live data of slice. You don't have to know anything much about live data, and that if you haven't had a chance to mess with that yet, though I strongly recommend it, uh, and that all you need to do is call observe on that slice live data and hand it the slice view. And you're done. 
Everything else is handled for you by the library in terms of being able to go in, request the slice, parse what's in it, and render it in the UI structure that you request. And so I have an inspector that's got, among other things, a view pager that has four pages, three of which are using a slice view. And so I've got a slice view widget inside of a constraint layout. No specific attributes here tied to slice view itself and that it's all just sized and positioned how I wanted, though I did elect to slap a white background color behind it to distinguish where the slice view is from the constraint layout, which I set as a darker gray. Then when I load up my layout, I get my hands on my slice view. In my case, I'm passing in, when I'm creating the fragment, I'm passing in an argument that indicates which of the three modes to be used. And I'm going to have different tabs showing each one of the three modes. And so I figure out what mode I'm supposed to be using, and I turn around and throw that into the mode property of the slice view. I then say, hey, slice live data, give me an instance based off of this URI. In my case, I'm cheating, and I'm hard coding the URI. I've got it in gradle.properties, um, and that the, and I'm using some Gradle code to hoist that value into build config, and that so I don't have to worry about where my URI is coming from. That we'll talk more about in a moment. And so I'm saying, hey, give me a slice live data from this URI, and that's a live data, so you pass in your lifecycle owner. In my case, it's my fragment. And you pass in the slice view, which is my observer of slice. And we're done. There's no more code for this. Uh, and so you sh uh, make uh, show this thing on your device or emulator. And come on, you get this. And so I've got my uh, three views where, at the moment, it won't show any of them because, once again, there is the permissions request. And so if I tap on one of those, I get my permission dialog, I say allow, it automatically reloads. And now I've got three representations, three different instances of that same fragment with different modes, the shortcut mode, the small mode, the large mode. Showing a slice is not especially difficult if you're using the built-in slice view stuff. Where things get a little interesting is if you want to do something else. You still get a slice live data, but you set up your own observer of slices, and you use those slice objects. A slice is basically a tree of slice items. So you'll have a slice, it'll have an array list of slice items that you can iterate over those. Some of those are going to be other slices, which have their own slice items. And you get this whole tree structure of information that is representative of what you built up using those builders. You also can create a slice metadata that will help you attempt to decode some of this stuff on that. Unfortunately, the documentation for this is modest, um, and that the and so there is, uh, it, it's not all that straightforward to necessarily understand what's all going on. With luck, that will improve someday. My fourth tab in the Slice Inspector represents a, a tree graph of all of those slice items, and that indicating, okay, is this a uh, slice item that represents a slice. Is this a, a long, an int, a piece of text? Is it an action? All I am doing is I'm using a third party uh, library for drawing that graph. I have created a, another slice live data on the URI, but this time I'm using my own observer where I have an on slice function that's going in, iterating over all those items and adding a child node to the tree where for each one of those nodes, I also see, oh, okay, is this particular slice item that's for this node, is it format a slice? If so, it has its own set of children, and I draw the whole tree beneath that. But there's going to be use cases for this. For example, 
uh, eventually, if slices become popular, we're going to, somebody is going to wind up creating a library that's going to use this stuff for helping you test your slices. And that where you will have, you know, you know, ham crust matchers and whatnot that are tied specifically to slices, where you'll be able to go in and say, ah, okay, um, I'm going, here's the URI, and I expect, you know, this action, and I expect this text, and so forth, in order to confirm that your slices are implemented the way that you're expecting. The challenge with hosting slices is where does that URI come from? And that the, it might come from an intent filter. This is the way that we will integrate with uh, your, um, uh, you make the, the Google search, Google assistant, you'll have an intent filter on your provider to indicate certain scenarios in which case your provider is relevant for. You could do your own protocols in that where you're using metadata elements, the same way as we do with app widget providers. Uh, if you're communicating by other means already between two apps and you want to use slices for sharing UI between them, whatever IPC mechanism you already have, you can pass URIs around fairly easily. The catch is the agreement. If you're in control of both sides of the communication, you simply need to agree with yourself. And that the, if you're trying to do something that's a broader ecosystem play, you're going to need to have some specifications and agreements between parties uh, and that so that everybody understands that, yes, this is how we're going to share this stuff. But you can imagine you know, e-commerce, you know, maybe companies named after large South American rivers, and that they were their apps, uh, and that the published slices were the URI. Part of what's in it is your referral ID and a search keyword. The app then turns around and publishes a slice that is you know, doing search results for products related to that keyword. Your host renders that slice, and you make a demonies, and that the offer the referral fees. The big benefits are that there's no, you don't need a proprietary ad SDK and all the crap that may come with it. You use Google's libraries and all of the, well, whatever. Um, and that the, and so you, you don't have to worry about um, you know, having in different ad SDKs for different ad networks. From the slice providers, this is richer than like a simple ad banner or other text. And from your standpoint as a host, this is less costly than a web view, both in terms of memory, processing time, and security. We could do another round of app widgets using this stuff. App widgets haven't really changed much since 2011. And that the, we could say that, oh, OK, well, we're going to have an agreement for how apps can publish slices that will be picked up by launchers. And we'll go in and have them appear in the widgets catalog alongside traditional app widgets and anything else. Might even create, using that custom slice rendering stuff, you might create code that takes a slice as input and just as slice view renders that to views, your code renders it to a remote views and publishes that as an app widget so that the same slice provider code base can support both a next generation app widget sort of structure along with the classic approach. Wikipedia or similar sorts of apps could publish slices where you provide search terms in the URI structure. Apps that want to integrate with that sort of thing could then embed those slices in pop-ups for like, you know, the user double clicks on a term and that the end you can go in and provide definitions for them. That is rendered in your own app space as opposed to always having to link the user out to a full-fledged activity provided by the other app. And once again, it's all part of a standard structure. There's no dedicated SDKs or anything you need for this. Multiple apps in an app suite wanting to share stuff. Action send alternatives. Wouldn't it be cool if there were a way that you could say, hey, I want to share this content with that other app, but without leaving your app? Well, maybe that other app publishes some sort of a slice in response to an action send sort of uh, request, and that where the user can specify inside of that slice, this is what I want to do with this data in the context of that other app while still in your UI dedicated sorts of apps specifically for uh, handling slices. Screen readers, for example, will not use slice view necessarily. They may use the custom slicing uh, code in order to be able to go in and uh, implement that for the visually impaired in a way that's more intuitive. 
on uh, that the create slice providers that you know automatically convert you know a swagger API or whatever into a slice developer tools the possibilities for things that we could do with slices are limited to our imagination and our coordination and so we'll see over time what we all wind up using them for one thing to watch out for, though, is compatibility, uh, and that the, we've got versioning challenges here, as we do with everything else, you know, web, web services, and so on, and that the hosts are going to need to be able to handle old and new slices alike, and that's a problem. Part of the reason why I had to make some hacks in the Slice and Dice app and pass bitmaps around is that for whatever reason, the Slice viewer with the Alpha 3 libraries couldn't handle my Beta 1 Slice provider um, and that with the images uh, and that straight from resources, whereas my own Slice host using the Beta libraries could handle it just fine. We'll see over time how much this is going to be a challenge. And so this is all going to be um, you, know, uh, you know, stuff that we are going to have to deal with as we move along. Slices are all still very new. Uh, and that the, uh, we're still in RC and alpha states, and that the, uh, we're still waiting for you know, the Google Search, Google Assistant integration, and so we'll see over time where we wind up flying this stuff. I thank you all for attending. I will be out in the back, uh, and that the, uh, take your questions uh, afterwards or catch up with me in the social times, and that I thank you all for attending, and enjoy the rest of the conference.